back. I prefer not to use this microphone if possible because otherwise I'm tethered to it. But uh, so everybody have a handout and a Scantron, okay, and a partner for activity today. So I'm Carla Zoltowski. I co-direct the EPICS program. I'm also an advisor for four of the teams, uh, Camp Riley, Glass, Slack, and Band. So um, kind of see a lot of you, see a lot of familiar faces. My background is electrical engineering, bachelor's and master's. I was actually working on my PhD in electrical engineering when I had triplets. Um, that kind of derailed that PhD. Um, but I did get a PhD in engineering education. Um, so I have a real interest in how you learn and um, especially related to design. That's what my PhD focused on. Um, my, one of my triplets was diagnosed with autism. Um, and so part of my interest and why I kind of align with some of the teams that I do because of my interest in um, being, making the world more accessible, okay? So you'll, you'll hear some of those stories as, as we go along with this. Um, if you have any questions, I wanted to, so I think all the returning students hopefully are now in B, arms, on their way to arms B71. You're welcome to stay here, but you've seen this before. Um, so don't necessarily want you to stay for that. So if you are taking EPICS for one credit, you have to do five lectures. This would be your second of those. So we'll have two more that focus on design, one that focuses on ethics, and then you'll be done with your lecture requirement. If you want to participate in skill sessions or any other activities because you're interested, you are more than welcome, but you will not be required. Because really, you learn by doing. We're going to kind of provide an overview of the resources that are available. But really, what's important, you'll learn it when you need to use it. And so we want to be able to point to where you can find those, uh, that information. And, and so you can um, actually learn it when you're at that point in your design. We probably have 100 different projects going on in EPICS right now. And so each of you are at different phases of the design process. So we try and uh, provide those resources that can be applicable across all the different disciplines and across all the different phases of the design process. But we're going to focus on design. That's the academic content that you'll learn as a part of this. Um, any questions about the lectures idea? Okay. Scantrons from the first lecture. I heard that there were a few of you who did not turn in your Scantron last week. If any of you are in that case, can you kind of pass those and give those to Ankit? So how many people have Scantrons from last week? Okay, I want you to fill those out, if possible. Do you not have them? Okay. What I'm going to do is, um, if you don't have it from last week, I'll, we'll go ahead and kind of pass these around. Can we do osmosis and have it get to? So if you have, you didn't turn it in from last week, fill it out. Make sure you mark a different date. Otherwise, you'll get credit twice for the same lecture, or you won't get credit for both lectures. So last week was 824. Make sure you write week one, 824 on the second one, or else we're not going to be able to, to be able to give you credit for both lectures. Okay? All right. Um, we have not yet posted the lecture slides. We will be posting those and putting a link with the YouTube. Can you pass those back? The YouTube videos. OK, so if you, especially this is probably important for those who are watching this on video, because I know that it's sometimes difficult to see the screen um, from on the videotape. But it also may be useful for you guys if there's a slide that has a lot of information and you don't want to necessarily 
scribble down or you can take a picture if you want. But anyway, it's a resource that you might want to go back to. So we'll have those posted in the next day or two. So those will be available. Any other questions, concerns? If you have a question, yes. So for the Scantron, you write, put your name, your ID number, and true for number one. You do not need to put the section. It is very use helpful for us if you actually write your, um, which team you're on under course. That way we can verify just in case there's any issues with it going in. It's a little easier for us to find it. But the critical information is your name, or your name, your ID, and true for number one. And do put the date. So today is August 31st. Okay. All right. Any other questions? That one was easy. Everybody know where they're going? And okay. All right. So we're gonna go through a rapid. Um, exposure to the design cycle today, introduce you a little bit to the EPICS design process, and comment on some critical uh, thinking or guide questions that you can use to help you uh, complete some of those reflection questions that you're being prompted to answer on a weekly basis. Okay. We're going to jump right into, instead of talking about design, we're going to do it. So you have three minutes to design an ideal wallet. So go ahead and go. Turn, open up your pages. Three minutes. Go. Yeah. Didn't pass it around. That's okay, fine. yep. Here you can take a few and pass it back up. So 30 more seconds. And those who are, who are watching this on video, you should find a partner and do this with a partner. It can be your roommate, friend, whatever, family member, but you should uh, do this exercise with a, a partner.
Okay, stop. All right, so you've designed an ideal wallet. Who was it that you designed your wallet for? Yourself, Yourself right? This tends to be what happens often when we do design. Somebody comes up with an idea and we start designing for ourselves. But we're going to go through a process to try and design and, um, for someone else, uh, develop design thinking. So the challenge here actually is to design something for your partner, right? Something that's useful and meaningful. The first step of design thinking and design process is actually gaining empathy for the person that you are designing for and with. So as a starting point, you're going to each have three minutes. We're going to cut this down just a little bit. Three minutes to interview each other and to find out what they might want for uh, their, their ideal wallet. I'll say switch after three minutes. So you spend the first three minutes, partner A, interviewing partner B. When I say switch, then you actually switch on that. Okay, um, one thing you might try and do, if you're willing, is maybe have your partner walk through the contents of their wallet. So think of strategies. How can you best understand what is a meaningful wallet for your partner? Okay, begin, go. I'm fine with this. Yeah. Okay, switch. Switch.
I'm a partner, so I interviewed myself. Is that alright? No, that's not alright. You can uh, maybe join another group. Two of you can do with one. Good, very good. All right, so now you're going to have a chance. You had your initial interview. Want you to re-interview uh, the person that you just, you know, partner A, uh, interview partner B. What I want you to explore, dig deeper. What were the things that most intrigued you about the uh, first interview? What you found out from the first questions? Ask why often. Kind of forget about the wallet and try and find out what's important to your partner. For example, why does he still care a picture of his ex-girlfriend? <laughs> Those might be things you might want to explore with that. So, okay, you'll have three minutes each and then I'll tell you to switch. So go ahead and go.
Okay, go ahead and stop. You guys are great. Thanks. All right, now the next step, I want you to think individually for a minute, reflect, and synthesize your learning from those two interviews into two groups. So you can turn the page. You want to express your partner's goals and also any insights you might have learned. You'll get two minutes for this. So, for example, use verbs to express the goals and wishes. The, for example, your, um, maybe your partner needs to minimize the number of things he carries. That might be something. Insights might be maybe your partner feels like they uh, make better purchasing decisions when they use cash, something like that. Okay, so you have two minutes to identify the most significant goals and wishes, and then or and then some insights you might have uh, learned as a result. Okay, go ahead and go. Two minutes. This is an individual. Okay, now identify the most compelling need and you're going to fill out the, t the point of view. So this is a stand by specifically stating the meaningful challenge that you're going to take on. Um, so it might be like Janice needs a way to feel she has access to all of her stuff and is ready to act. Surprisingly, carrying her purse makes her feel less ready to act, not more. So that might be an example. So you're filling in like a Mad Lib about what the, um, the, the user need that's most important and maybe any insight or surprising because of. Okay, two minutes for that. Go. That's individual still. Oh yeah, finding out your partner's name. <laughs> 